like to call the meeting to order. It's uh, 7.05. So good evening. Um, this is the Appropriations Committee meeting. And uh, our Appropriations Committee members, we have Pam Waxlax, Shahadul Dual Menu, and uh, Rebecca Roback, and I'm Mike Manning. And uh, the first item on our agenda is our open forum. So if there's anyone who has anything they'd like to say, please come to the microphone. On uh, to the next. Oh. No, she's just making nope. <laughs> She's just making <laughs> 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 They baked us out. No, the, no, if you stand up like that, it's public comment time. <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda is our fiscal year 19 comprehensive budget review. Uh, last week we were still voting on some items. We had a couple of questions we needed to go over. Uh, we needed responses to, so we can continue that portion of the meeting. So where are we in terms of what we want to do? Do we want to review uh, our questions first, or is there anything to continue on with the new? Uh, I think since we have so many people in the audience yeah. that yeah. we invite them to come up to speak about the turf fields. Okay, one of our previous dis uh, questions that we had was about the turf fields. So specifically, uh, which question is it on your open? Yes. Oh, we were just we were looking for the uh, the budget model forecast of revenues and expenses. Um, Is there somebody from the turf fields who can answer some of these questions that we see? It was the financial reform in the time for the bottle. Dr. McLeod. <laughs> Welcome. Um, Hi, Dr. McLeod. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, um, some of the questions that we did have, uh, those can be provided. Uh, we de we're looking for a budget model forecast for revenue expenses to determine feasibility of the carpet replacement. Uh -huh. Can we send that to you? Do you have that? Is that what came later on? Or yes. yes. Came this afternoon, yeah. <laughs> it, um, I, can, I can bring it up. 357. Okay. Came from Me? Jean. Jean. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions on the revenue uh, modeling? So if you could just say how you um, came up with the hours that you're expecting it to be used and the rates to be used mm -hmm. for the estimates. Do you, do you want to do that, Dan? Jay started that model for us. Um, I, th I think the hours were netting out. I think the, the understanding is that the schools are apt to use them until about 6 p.m. Uh, most weeknights during school and a, a morning or so during the weekend. And we just looked at the additional hours, counted them up as, as they go with the seasons. It's a little tougher to estimate. Um, it, it, and all this is based on what we've done, what we've seen at Fruit Street. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's a little bit tough to figure that you're going to have or commit to a whole bunch of hours in the summer because they're just tougher to, to, to rent during, during that time. Um, as far as the rate goes, this is kind of the going rate, and that's what we charge out of that $175. That's what we charge out of town okay. users now. Um, numbers on the left are kind of conservative. The numbers <coughs> on the right are a little bit more uh, aggressive. So if this is based on the um, what's happening at Fruit Street, is it the Fruit Street's in in high demand? I I assume, and that there is the need to. I hate to use the "if you build it, they will come" analogy, but um, that there is going to be more demand for the space, and so by taking the same sort of hours 
it's it's a realistic that it would that we would double the amount of hours that could be yeah. rented to outside. Yes, um, but I think that there needs to be a little bit of proactive salesmanship, or or, 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 or we need to go out to groups that that. Um, have used fields before, have requested fields and that type of thing, and, and try to work with them to, to get them to uh, book more hours. So are you using 100% utilization for this model? No. Or what is the percentage? I don't know what the percentage is. It's just a, just a, a, a ballpark estimate. And I mean, the other thing on the revenue side of things, I, I, I'd like to say t two things. One, th there isn't a, a strong financial justification for this. This, the justification is more there's a, an incredible need for the for it um, there is demand we get calls that we turn down all the time so so there is there is demand for this um, and the other thing is it, we don't know what it's going to cost to replace or what year the replacement is going to occur I think that the, the um, conventional wisdom is that the, the fields last 10 years um, we're uh, I've walked the field along with Amy Mick from Hopkins Youth Soccer for, for Fruit Street, and we're going to go going on 10 years. We're going to go 12, 13, 14 years at Fruit Street before we need replacement. So is the revenue, is there already a bucket for revenue for the replacement of Fruit Street, the Fruit Street fields at this point, or that's going to come out of the same? No, 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 this is completely separate. And, and, yet, and yes, there is money available for replacement of Fruit Street, but uh, okay. uh, it, it, uh, I don't think it will be 100% funded. Yep. Is that a Parks and Rec revolving fund? Is that where that money is. for Fruit Street? Okay. Right, Norman? Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We do kind of a book, uh, just a, a, a separate entry to, to keep track of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also discussed who's going to cover or how the electric bills are going to be covered for the floodlights in the evening. Have we resolved that or have an answer for that? That would be paid out of the revolving fund. Out of this fund? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't have it included in the expenses? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know what the cost is going to be because we don't have lights right now. But the revolving fund will pay for the maintenance, so, so and that's maintenance. included in that. Um, and you can see the current expenses at Fruit Street on an annual basis are about twelve thousand dollars a year, and so we're projecting somewhere between, you know, forty-three and ninety-five thousand dollars of revenue. So I don't believe the lights are going to cost that much. So I might have missed the answer, but the revenue in this modeling is. Does include Fruit Street as well as? No, this is just totally four separate. and five. Okay. It's just that we use what's happening at Fruit Street as the basis for making these calculations. Jay, Jay okay, provided. I get you because I see the Fruit Street mm -hmm. expenses there, so that's why. Okay. Uh, well, no, we yeah. Yeah. We, we understanding have, market rates and understanding what what expenses actually are. So exactly. Okay. The reason I asked for the current expenses from Fruit Street, as you can see on the left, are the current expenses at Fields Four and Five. We've been asked how this was going to impact the school operating budget. So that was the best information that I could come up with to give you. So currently we're spending about $25,000 a year um, in our operating budget on fields four and five, and they're spending about $12,000 a year on Fruit Street. And so that's just the best information that we have available in terms of the impact there or the reduction there. Does, does having um, the turf fields at the high school now reduce the amount of games that the schools need to have over at Fruit Street? Yes. It does so it increases your capacity? Yes, okay. exactly. It, it, I don't know that it would totally eliminate it, I think depending on seasonal schedules, and sometimes there are events like both boys and girls, uh, maybe they do this for lacrosse too, but both boys and girls varsity soccer play at the same time on Fruit Street and all the youth soccer groups come and they get you know, mm -hmm. autographs and so I mean there may still be some of that um, as well. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it would eliminate use of Fruit Street, but it would dramatically reduce it, which, you know, I think Susan added up in the last, in, in FY17, I think we spent about $10,000 um, using Fruit Street in Midway and this year it's over twelve um, mm -hmm. because we had to move our entire soccer season to Fruit Street in addition to field hockey, which we've had to do for the last several years. 
just you know as point of information we have yet to play on our fields this year um, this spring because the kids can't get, the, get on them they're too wet mm -hmm. um, all the practices have been inside tryouts are inside we're you know and we had some challenge to our baseball field during the marathon um, and so you know we're not going to be able to play on that field for at least a couple of weeks so the expense will continue to grow in the FY18 budget in terms of moving to other locations mm -hmm. for our games. And then in the um, in the original um, the in the bid estimate or the bid that you guys have received um, do you know how much of the cost is related to the carpet that might be expected to? Yes, I do. Um, so I, I got that today from Kathy Herbal. So we went through the um, the public bid for the turf and the um, fill. So the total project cost is nine hundred twenty five thousand five hundred thirty four dollars. The carpet is two hundred and forty one five sixty two. The infill is 441 185 and the shock pad is 198 836 So the infill and the shock pad, um, you would expect to replace in the second replacement cycle, not the first. Um, that would just be the carpet. But as Dan just explained to me, I shouldn't get excited that that number is $241,000 because that doesn't include labor. So it would be more than that. Um, I have the number. I mean, the field's roughly the same size as Fruit Street, and I, get, I have the number of a million dollars in my head. Okay. Um, but you just don't know 10 years from now what opportunities there are to, to, to do something better or safer or, mm -hmm. or, or anything along those lines. Uh, and you don't know if it's 10 years. Um, like I said, the way we've maintained Fruit Street, we're, 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 we're I think we're through year eight this year and um, this should be another four or five years of life and the conversations we've had with people that do these things. And you're plowing Fruit Street, right? We do plow Fruit Street. And you don't see that reflected on what right. I sent you and there is a reason for that, uh, which is that when they when they do plow Fruit Street, they divide that up between all of the users in that season so mm -hmm. they don't carry it as a, as a, it wasn't reflected up above in the revenue so we didn't include it down below in the um, maintenance because it just so out. In, in, in really round numbers for every dollar we're going to spend plowing we'd probably see another 80 cents in um, in, in uh, field rental revenue because of that because of that sharing the way we rented Fruit Street is is Parks and Rec contributes a little bit and every one of the users during the time when fields would potentially need to be plowed they say that they, they, they all contribute whether their weekend uh, mm -hmm required plowing or not okay because I know a couple of years ago you had plowed specifically for a tournament yep and that more than covered the, t yeah. the cost and mm, yeah, I thought but, so. but but the so what we learned from that is that the plowing is one thing if you plow a lot it requires, requires more maintenance so if you plow three times, you're going to have to put more infill down the stuff. You've been to Fruit Street. You've seen the piles of black stuff down there. That's that. That's the infill that keeps the fibers sticking up. Um, and 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 it's a little bit of um, uh, shock protection, so it prevents concussions. So when we plow more, we need to replace more infill, so that cost goes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, again, we we. The, the, the model of Fruit Street is to is to get everyone to contribute to that. We benefit from it. The schools contributed to it this year, even though you know we might not have plowed specifically for an event that they had. They still benefited it. Benefited because we plowed on Thursday, and the, and, and they were out there on Monday, even though someone else used it for two days in between. Okay. Any other questions no. about the turf fields? Yeah. Um, I think something to think about in estimating the, the, the revenues is perhaps the opportunity that might be created by having two AstroTurf fields in town. Right. You thereby attract larger tournaments. Being a father of young soccer players, there's nothing that is just attractive to a soccer tournament is heavy. Absolutely, and that's part yeah. of the spirit between, behind the MOU 
is is to kind of centralize the management of, of that in, in order to achieve that. Yeah, but you're exactly right. It, it makes Fruit Street even more attractive because we also have fields four and five. And the other thing I wanted to point out too is that these numbers don't include um, potentially increasing a fee for playing under the lights. Mm -hmm. This is just the rate that we have now at Fruit Street with no lights. So um, again, we just were trying to be conservative and sort of provide with what we see as the floor rather than the ceiling in terms of revenue. Yeah. Two questions. The, the numbers that you've uh, shared regarding the revenues include funds that will be coming to the revolving fund that will, I think, pay the discussions with town council fall under the purview of the school committee. Correct. My question is, do these numbers include the revenue that might come to Park and Rec to the enterprise? It will only go to the revolving fund. This is strictly for the revolving fund. So they potentially could be more revenue. Um, I, I think only to the extent that, that if someone came and rented at both facilities for a weekend, we'd, we'd divide up. I mean, it, it's based on an hourly rate. So if someone paid $15,000 to rent both fields, mm -hmm. and there was one field at one location and two fields at another, then one field would see $5,000 in revenue, and the other field, the other two fields would see $10,000 in revenue. Yeah. The, the other opportunity I was perhaps contemplating, based on what we heard from town council, is that if there's a park and rec program, that is run by Park and Rec on the fields. Uh, for example, if it's a program where people have to uh, pay a fee towards Park and Rec, mm -hmm. that money would go towards the enterprise. Yep. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Um, the second question is, the committee was interested in hearing more detail regarding the private fundraising mm -hmm. in terms of targets and the schedule for receiving the money. <coughs> So, I mean, I think, you know, for purposes of, of today's numbers, we don't have the $500,000 right now, and I don't expect we'll have all of that by town meeting. So you should operate on that middle sheet, which shows the borrowing rates for $1.8 million. That's minus the CPC. Um, I think, you know, we, we've had several discussions about this. Um, the money will be collected in some combination of the boosters fund that's already set up, as well as gifts made directly to the schools that will go into a gift account, which was... Um, a part of our discussion with town council on Friday, I think he was going to send us some guidelines around that. Um, obviously, we have have gift accounts already at the school, so we're familiar with how that works. Um, and then, so you know, that money can be returned to the town. You know, means that can be determined on an ongoing basis and whatever. I don't know how the library is doing it, for example, but we're certainly open to whatever suggestion um, there is uh, in that regard. But I think. You know, for the purposes of what we're talking about right now, in terms of the cost that we should expect to do the borrowing on, I would say that the, the 1.8 number is the number to plan for. Yeah. Perhaps to ask the question differently, mm -hmm. it, it, does the fundraising effort mm -hmm. tell the potential donors when you expect to receive the donations from them or the funds from them? In other words, if you're fundraising, usually it's not an open-ended process. You specify to the people who are donating when you perhaps expect to receive a check from them. Well, Has so we're it, taking yeah. money. There's a GoFundMe right now, and the boosters mm -hmm. have done some fundraising, and there's a T-shirt campaign and things like that. And we also are um, talking with sponsors in the community, but Ray asked us to slow down until we got back to us about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so par in part, Answer will will depend on the response from Ray, but um, there should likely be the opportunity for a large donation or a donation that would take place over the course of several years. So, for example, if you wanted to put your name on a scoreboard and that was thirty thousand dollars, you could give us thirty thousand dollars, or you could give us three thousand dollars a year for ten years, and that was what Ray described as being facilitated through the gift account. I guess that was initially my question, um, was it last week, uh, about this issue about, you know, a more formal method of saying this is what the town can expect and when they can expect it instead of being 
been ended. So I don't know. Um, I would like to see that somehow either it's in the article itself or amended that's saying it'll, if you, I understand that it's kind of short notice to get the entire amount, but to say, yes, we should borrow it, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it to you over time is, it's difficult to plan on that or expect that or how the town yeah. should. So how was that phrased in the library motion? It wasn't, and I have the same issue with, with the library. Okay. So. so I guess I would just say again, you know, that was part of the conversation that we had with town council, and we're, we're waiting for mm -hmm. feedback on that. But, um, you know, certainly open to, to input on how that's best handled. I mean, I, I don't anticipate that we're going to be knocking on doors every day for 10 years to finally get the $500,000. But, um, but again, we are not going to have that by town meeting. So we're going to have to agree to something somewhere in the middle. In fact, if I may. Can I just I do. Sure, Dr. Bokhan. Um, the amount of, I'm sorry, let me feed back The amount of effort that is going into this, this is not something that um, is that there, the committee is not serious about it. and by that I mean the athletic fields committee um, there's been a lot of outreach to other um, communities in terms of the ideas that they can share with us about and we feel very confident that this is something that we're going to be able to do but because we've done so much of the work ahead of um, because we wanted so much in place for town meeting so that the voters would understand all of these things that are in place. Um, it's really difficult for us to give a specific number, you know, an assurance on the fundraising, except to say that this is something we're really serious about. And although we need to plan for the larger, I'm sorry, 8 million, you said, Gene, not 1.7? 1. 1.8. Um, 1. We, we, we need to say that because we don't have a, a, we can't present you tonight or even by town meeting with a definite plan. All that we can say is that we have a lot of energy. It's not as though we're going to pass this and then, oops, we're not interested in fundraising any longer. Um, I mean, we're trying to provide as much as we can ahead of time. Um, so, so I just wanted to um, add for the committee's consideration that this is a little bit unusual in terms of where we are in the process because we haven't even received approval to move forward. Okay. And, and one thing that I had been thinking about is perhaps I know you have a phase two in mind that prior to phase two being proposed that the, the fundraising commitment for phase one is complete. Yeah. That, or some, I, I mean, that shouldn't be that high a bar, but it yeah. just, and I, it's I, something that somebody could say, well, you said you would meet this commitment. By no, I think that's two. entirely reasonable. I, I wasn't really thinking it was going to take that long, <coughs> just uh, me personally, but I think that's entirely reasonable yeah and if I may um, I could I just got this uh, a copy of the most current version of the draft motion and I'll be forwarding it to you all um, from town council with regard to the private fundraising this is the language that is used it's in connection with the 1.805 for 18 uh, from general revenues, part of the language reads as follows. Provided, however, that said sum shall be reduced by the amount received as gifts or donations in support of the purposes of this motion as of the date 30 days prior to the issuance of any such bond or not. That's what we have in the draft motion. Okay, so that's new, new to us. I don't know what that date is. Yeah, I, I, I can, I, I, I just got this now. No, 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 yeah. I know. I, so what would that date be? It's, it will depend on the construction schedule that we'll mm -hmm. receive following town meeting approval. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we will then define a borrowing schedule for the project. So, so based on that, if someone made, uh, use the example of the scoreboard, mm -hmm. would, if someone donated $30,000, that would just reduce the debt? Is that what the, the, the debt 
um, is that what that motion is saying? Okay. So it, yes, it could okay. it could say that, but again, it depends on how you have structured the fundraising effort. Yes. Yeah. If, for example, I think if the borrowing, yeah, I don't know enough about when the borrowing starts, but if the borrowing starts on July first, then essentially that means June. June first, which I think is unrealistic. No, probably we'll probably it should be after that. Four, it should be most likely around four. Because we do have we usually yeah. like one or two borrowings a yeah. year, right? So it would be around four. And yeah. and grouping everything together, so it's not borrowing for an individual project; it's yeah. like a larger borrow. So yeah. there would be more September. Yeah. I like yeah. Mike's idea. <laughs> so I did see an amortization schedule that. Uh, Norman Kamalo provided, and uh, one thing you have year easy year zero. There's no no payment. Is that the fiscal year 19 budget, or is that is fiscal year budget 19 year one, which does have the first payment? Would you, do you have an answer to that? We have to okay. budget into this year's budget. Again, it all depends on the borrowing schedule. Yeah. Most likely in in in. In FY19, there may not be any payment except for perhaps simple interest. Mm -hmm. So year one, so yeah. year zero is FY19. Most likely. And year one is FY20. I have to be confused with calendar years. Great. <laughs> so even if it is just interest, it could be a significant, you know, it would be interest on if it's a November borrowing, it would still be eight months interest. This I, shows again, yeah, this shows zero principal and interest in, in year zero, if that's what we're saying is FY19. Yeah, again, it, it all depends on how all of this is structured, mm -hmm. and if we have a generous donor. Uh, through the fundraising effort, all of these changes. Right. Yeah. The town may go, for example, with the temporary bond note and then come back and plow whatever donation is made back into this project, and all of this then changes. So I, I would encourage us not to get hung up on when does this really kick off. I think the main goal is should town meeting, make, should town meeting approve this project? Our understanding is that construction will commence immediately. Yes. And that the, yes. And the fields will be available come September. Correct. I think that's what that's what we're working towards. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that motion need to be modified in anticipation of the potential for gifts being made over a, a commitment right. being made over a number of years? I can ask town council that question. So if someone were to give fifty thousand dollars over ten years, mm -hmm. I just. I, that would imply that if the first 5,000 came, then it would go towards this, but it leaves it open-ended on, on the other 45. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I believe that that's one aspect that Ray is continuing to look into based on our conversation on Friday. Okay. Yeah. So that is still fluid, is what I'm taking away from this conversation. Yes. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the rest of the motion, in fact, we, are these extra copies? Yeah. Do you have? We all have them. Okay. Yeah, it's on page 19. And the motion is now broken into in fact, it's it's one combined motion with three oh, components. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 one motion with three components. Um, the the total appropriation is three million five hundred and twenty-five four hundred and eighteen. Mm -hmm. And then, based on the CPC votes, and this was decided uh, early this afternoon, that the one million dollars will be from the community preservation fund with $300,000 from the passive active recreation and then $700,000 from the undesignated fund balances. Okay. And there's a clarifier that provided, however, that such funds shall not be used for the acquisition of the turf field. Correct. I believe that was the intent of the yes. CPC. And then the next component 
is the 720,000 from the Community Preservation Fund to be used only for the lighting associated with the athletic field project. And that this will be a borrowing. And that's borrowing against the reserve also? It shall be made, yes, in the first instance, in the first instance from the CPC Reserve Fund. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So that reflects, um, I think that's really helpful because obviously yeah. the um, approval of the CPC funds is half of the funding of this project. So I would imagine that people want to know that that has taken place before they vote. So I think that that works really well from our standpoint and we'll, we'll continue to talk about that last sentence under C. Yeah. Um, and then... Which is the third component. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, item C is the 1,805,418 from the general revenues, and this will be a borrowing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then okay. based on our conversation, uh, or the follow-up to our conversation on Friday, the revolving fund actually does not need to be set up at town meeting. We have the ability to, to set that up already because we adopted that Chapter whatever 71. it was in 1989. Yeah. So that's all, and that's, I assume it's not in here anymore. That's not here, okay. yes. Great. Okay. Thank you, that's really helpful. Any questions? Good. Okay, thank you. All right, Good. Well, thank thank you. say goodbye to Dr. McCloud. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. I have no idea how to hang up, so. <laughs> so it's curious. Next, did we want to discuss the, the quarter? Do we have questions on the... Oh, the Main Street quarter? Main Street quarter. Or do we just want to go through... Were well, we going to get um, information on the two uh, host community agreements for the Muse and the Legacy and how they would be um, impacting the spending on this? Yeah, I believe the question was what, what were the amounts and Dave... Okay, yeah, they provided. Yes, I have the amounts. The HCA amendment number five, there are three payments. Which one is that? Legacy. You know, Legacy. Legacy. Okay. Yes. There are three payments. The first was 375000 the next was 375 and the one forthcoming 750000 And then the Muse already paid $1 million. And then there was the grant, uh, which was the Massworks grant, 500,000. What's that last one? The Mass Massworks. Massworks. And that was what amount, I'm sorry? 500,000. Thank you. And then we were also looking, are they um, limited in, are they, do they, do they specifically state what they can be used for? I know that news was, was traffic improvements. Yes. But has that money already been spent elsewhere? No. Oh, okay. No, the, you mean the Muse money? Right. No, it hasn't been spent okay. anyway. <laughs> so and 750 left for Legacy, is that available as well? All of the Legacy is All available. All of this, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you saying it's not designated yeah. specifically for undergrounding, but for traffic improvements? It is designated for Main Street corridor improvements. That includes undergrounding. I thought it was just traffic improvement. This, this is, wait, this, for, for are we on Muse still? If you read the safety audit, the, the location of the poles along Main Street presents a traffic and public safety hazard. That's why, going forward, the option has always been if there's no undergrounding, the poles shall be moved. So it's almost two million that is going to be available. It's more than. That's a three, three yeah, million. Three million. 
So the poll shall be moved at whose expense is this? Is it part of that's still covered by the mass the mass funding? Is it covered by tip? Yes. When negotiating. <laughs> I'm just shaking my head now. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I think we've said it publicly too. That part of our argument is that one other opportunity to provide outside resources to fund this project is the argument that we have made, namely, regardless of what happens, the state may have to underground the wires at the intersection. We want to know what that cost is, and then we'll retrieve that cost and apply it to the underground project. Similarly, we've also asked for the cost for moving the poles. Mm -hmm. What is that cost? We want to bring that cost into offsetting the, the cost of the underground. So we're trying everything to, to at least grow the outside funding for this project. That's good. And when are you going to find that number? Okay. Well, we will know definitively by the end of the design phase. Yeah. Sounds like turf field, right? Mm -hmm. We always no, have no, no, the no, no, top no, no, no. level that's that we that's, can no, 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 no. borrow, that's different. and then we're trying to offset it. That is different <laughs> from what we just discussed. We went to town meeting, town meeting said no to the appropriation. We have put an effort that has generated over $3 million for this project. But there's a potential for more, is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. And the um, um, the legacy payments that yes. we've received, those are specifically, you had said last time, for trails or undergrounding. Correct. Question on the motion or the article for the Main Street corridor. Shouldn't that amount be the five and a half million? And it may have changed. I didn't look. Well, not Since that's the full offset. amount to be offset by the contributions from the host community agreements. Again, it, it could be the way. We're not asking the town to borrow $5 million. The money is already in hand. The article is focusing on borrowing. But don't we have to appropriate the money no. to be spent? No. Is, is the, legacy the, amuse paying directly? No. The, the HCA expressly authorizes the selectmen to use the funds. Rebecca, Shadu? No. Okay, I think that ends the questions on the downtown corridor. Should I keep going with the new information? In the motions? Yes, in the motions. I, I, I suggest Article 2, uh, if the committee is willing, place that on hold. We, we're still thinking people are going to show up with transfers. We have asked and asked. Uh, so far, we have not had any response, but we're definitely there, there will be a transfer request at the 11th hour. The, the Article 2 of the Fiscal 18 Supplemental. Exactly. So it's not just going to be the snow and ice? Correct. I'm sure I'm sure other people are going to show up. This happens every year. So 
why would they use do it this way versus um, a year-end transfer request? Because there are limits on the year-end transfer request. Okay. So if, if the request goes beyond those limits, we then bring it to town meeting. Do we have the funds to, with which to do that? It, <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to find a way. Okay, we've, we've seen this happen almost every year. Do you have a sense of how much it is? Are we talking a couple hundred, a couple no thousand? Okay. No idea. No idea. This is this is the stuff that shows up at the eleventh hour. Mm -hmm. That every town manager dreads. <laughs> yeah. So um, so if we don't have, do we? We know what the snow and ice. Do we know what the snow and ice component of this is going to be, or no? We we're do. tempting another nature there. <laughs> we do. No, we're not. We do, but again, as we know, we we there's snow projected tomorrow. And did I see some models also extending to next week, oh, Chief? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, blaming you again because you said no more snow. No. <laughs> and and, and we're still compiling bills from the last snowstorms, so that's why we're putting a hold on this one. So obviously, I'm just I'm thinking from a reports perspective. Mm -hmm. Next Monday night when we have Monday night when we have our next meeting, we won't likely have that number then either, and may just in the report. Leave it open ended and say to be yeah. to be defined, yeah, okay. to find the town meeting. So, we still have no vote on Article 2, correct? Yeah. Yes. But I do know how what I need to do in the report. And then, Article 3. As I was saying earlier, that stuff shows up at the 11th hour. I saw something show up this afternoon. Um, Verizon from Park and Rec 162.70, electronics reduction 202.86, and then cross match 1906.79. But I'm. What was the last one? <laughs> Cross match, yeah, uh, and and I'm I'm confident something's going to show up from DPW. With all due respect <laughs> to <laughs> our wonderful DPW team, they've been busy working on snow events and so forth, um, and I'm sure one of their vendors is going to show up. So again, I'm asking for a hold on this one until we really get all these numbers together. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, so, I mean, obviously it won't happen before, that won't happen, I know, before Monday, because I know John's not here this week. Yes. So, um, as a result, we'll obviously have a subsequent meeting regardless, but yeah. is there a way to say, okay, you've got to get these invoices in by this point in time? We, we we've, have we've said, said it many times, I'm sure. Yes. Janet McKay. Yes, and email after email. But we all know stuff shows up. When do we have to get the motions all locked down? When do we publish? It'd be nice if we get as many done today. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But isn't there like a date where we get everything published so we can make copies and get them ready for town meeting? Usually. Well, hopefully in not an hour before town yeah. meeting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We've done that in the past. No, I'll, I'll tell you, for the most part, the motions document is almost final. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just this few yeah. items that are still hanging out there. Yeah. I mean, I hope the budget is by that. That one, the overall operational budget, we're, I guess we haven't gotten there yet. But, uh, yeah. It, here's the interesting piece. Um, as I've been saying over the last perhaps three months, we are putting an extraordinary effort in reconciling what went to town meeting, what is in Munis, and what we're reporting to the state. And something is coming up regarding how regarding how 
the motion, the budget motion was constructed in the last two years versus the year before. And we don't have a solution yet. We're still reviewing what that means. And therefore, the budget motion is under construction. Is this just wording or is it to break it out? It's, it's appropriately identifying the funding sources for the budget. And again, our attempt being trying to line up those three phases, town meeting, units, certification, including uh, setting the tax rate. Okay. Yeah. And, and 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 obviously, part of this conversation includes or involves bond premiums. Mm -hmm. We jumped ahead in the article. I know. Week. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> because we can do the next one that we have to do still. Exactly. Set the we salary have, of elected officials. Yes, we have the numbers. Okay. I move the Appropriation Committee recommend this set the salary of an elected official's article to fix the salary of the elected town clerk for fiscal year commencing J July 1, 2018 at $67,599.22. I second. Discussion? How did this new number, what is it based on? Or how did it come about? Yeah, I, I think basically um, there are several considerations, and I'll narrow them down to I'll narrow them down to to two. Um, one is the the quality of the work, accomplishments, and and performance of the incumbent. I would not get into greater detail on that topic because it might sound like I'm campaigning for <laughs> for an elected official. That was one consideration. The other consideration is basically what the market is paying. Um, I, I think in this case there was also reference to uh, the, the raises that have been uh, afforded non-union non staff town-wide, both town as well as schools. So there's an internal equity issue as well. What percent increases it from the current salary? It's a... Uh, uh, 3%? Yeah. yeah. Yep. If I may. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, it's approximately 3% increase from the current salary, um, offset by last year's 0. 0.000071% increase. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you have that increase. Yeah. Yeah. Did you round up a dollar? <laughs> okay, that was the only. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Any other questions? Discussion? We're ready for a vote. All those in favor of Article 7, uh, setting the salary for the elected official, for the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0, the motion carries. So now on to the operating budget. Do you think that's something that we'll get Monday? If we're working on it, most likely perhaps Wednesday. That's, that's really, not one we really want to say vote at a town meeting. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, clearly. We still have a couple of weeks. Yes. But we're, we need to issue that. I'm thinking from a report perspective. Yeah. The information's all in the report. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a matter of not the vote, though. Yeah. We, we're touching base with DOR just to make sure we use the appropriate language. We know the components of the budget. We know the components. No, the menu of the funding sources. We just want to make sure that we structure the motion correctly. So we don't break out school versus the town budget. That's all considered this amount that's going to the general fund. Is that correct? Am I reading this how this is set up? It's it's one motion. Right. Um, and we identify, I think we did this last year, we identify the the amounts for the municipal side mm -hmm. and the amounts for the school side. 
We did it, so mm -hmm. we did say so, so much should be spent at the discretion of the school committee and the rest to be spent at the discretion of whoever. I don't think we use those words. Let me kind of point out the. I thought it was. Keep in mind, it's when we present mm -hmm. this article that the school committee will present, will discuss their part of the budget. Um, I mm -hmm. present mm -hmm. on the town budget so we can talk about all the different pieces of it to the town. So it's not the motion is. It's all one big piece, but when you have the discussion describing it, it's probably a half hour discussion for the, for the one yeah, article. Yeah, and the reason I, I ask is if someone wants to make an amendment because they think the school budget is too high or the other one, they've got to actually break it all out then. So, not that, and I know that never happens, but yeah. it just seems they have to, to be ident able to identify the department because yeah. the vote that we're taking is the back of the appropriation report. It's all, it, it 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 basically gives each department line item. Yeah. So we're not we're not saying eighty whatever million. We're saying we're so in the okay. Mm -hmm. I, hear, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and nothing, Rebecca, has, if I may, through the chat, nothing has changed from what we have done in past years. Mm -hmm. Town meeting so participants can identify town managers uh, a budget and put a hold on it and discuss and make motions to adjust that. Mm -hmm. That's still. So is all this information in the AC report, or there is also another line item for the budget itself? I know we we have that all the different art, all the different pieces in the AC report, but is there also another document at town meeting that just has here's the budget? No, just our report. It's just just our the report. AC report. That's the yeah. only report. Okay. By Chara, that can be a town meeting. Okay. And, that, and it's it's not the individual pages where we give the in, the information. It's it's actually the very last where it says right um, line item appropriation, and that's what we're voting. Okay, correct. So I I know in the very past past. <laughs> We did actually have a separate motion for the school budget, and then there was a separate one for the town. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know they got put together, mm -hmm. but when they initially got put together, there was it was still identified this amount was for the school budget and yeah. this amount was for the That's, town. W that is not changing. So it's just that it's not showing up in the motion now. So it's just. I'm just wondering yeah. if, if, if people understand that and if it makes it more confusing to not put it in the motion. No, it shows up in the motion. I, I mean, I'm just trying to get to my first year. Yeah. Do, is it this document that um, we're going to review tonight, does it contain like last year's? Um, no, but recording? the one that, um, that you got shared electronically, mm -hmm. the end of that has the, um, the end of that particular document. <coughs> mm -hmm. So in the table of contents, there's a, um, there's a, there's a table of contents. There is. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a, a line, there's a heading that says line item appropriation. And that's, and so maybe what we need to do, and this is jumping ahead into the report part, Sorry. is to define this is what is being appropriated at town meeting. We, we always do. The motion will reference the appropriation at town meeting is on column X, and we identify the column. So is it going to closely mimic what you, the motion and how it's written in last year's budget motion? Y yes. We have can, the different discussion. enterprise funds. Enterprise funds, the municipal side budget, the team, the school uh, budget. Yeah. Um, the, the big issue. Oh, okay, so do you have last year? Right, thank you. Because I save it. <laughs> yeah. The motion. Yeah, the motion. Last year, I do. 
it's I have it. This is it. Okay. The, the motion, the different, you know, appropriates for the different uh, funds. So general fund and a CPC. Right, which is how it's structured here. The right. Described in the operating budget of the town, the appropriations committee report. See, if I was your average town meeting member, I don't think I'd know where to look for that. Unless we say, you know, found on page blah blah or something. And we, well. Mm -hmm. Or somehow we let people know. Yeah, or well, if they, if they look in the AC report, that's going to be the thickest thing there. You're going to see this huge section that this has here. But what I was saying is in the AC report, we can put something up at the top of the line. line we could say line item appropriation to be voted at yeah. town meeting. Yeah, yeah. in the table as the, as the title. Yeah. Yeah. I think we always do that. We point to that column. How likely. Yeah. Uh, are you looking for just division between school and the town, the rest of the town? I think, I think that's what most people are interested in. Yeah. yeah. So is, is it something we can <coughs> add here, or we're we looking? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Well, because we say general fund, but that includes both. That includes keep as well. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to be transparent. That's all. Yeah. Again. Here's what, here's where it, what may be totally been less transparent. Mm -hmm. Part of the municipal budget includes school expenses. Mm -hmm. And we're not telling people that. That's not, I understand the goal of being transparent, but what we're suggesting is not transparent. There is no scientific way of, of apportioning so far, I've not, I've, I've not found it. Here's the total cost of running the schools, and here's the total cost of running the municipal. But I thought that's what the school. No, the, he's referring to the benefits. Mm -hmm. The benefits, right. the general insurance, the oh, workers' right. comp. There is. But people know that they okay. elect the school committee to manage the budget. That's one of their primary responsibilities. So I think they want to know what is that dollar amount that they're managing. Right here. Right there. Right. Yeah, no, it's right there. It's just as long as we can let people know clearly. Because yeah. I heard people complain last year that they didn't, they wanted to see it broken out, that, that they thought it they was... They wanted to be able to vote it on their own. And not even they, necessarily vote it on their own, but understand, you know, okay. okay, this is what the dollar is for the schools. But could just get a general idea about... Yeah, yeah. 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 And Again, perhaps it's, <coughs> perhaps it's, a, it's, a, it's a public education issue. Mm -hmm. We need to do more public education. I have been at town meetings and I can list a series of examples. With control, town meeting discussed that and moved it around the budget. Um, there was also the reduction of this town manager budget, I believe, at one point. Um, town meeting members still have the ability to identify any item listed on this page. Right. For separate discussion. I do think one of, I mean, we're partly to blame for it, but one of the problems is if somebody makes an amendment and it changes all the numbers, instead of having separate right. articles for the school and this one, everything's got to be recalculated. And a couple of years ago, we didn't, we weren't mm. too quick to respond to any changes to someone wants 50,000 less to that, but to that thing. It just took a while for us to recalculate everything, make a whole new motion for the entire. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, article and that it seems to if you if it was pre in years ago it was broken out into more different sections so it was easier for someone to come up and say I'd like to change this number. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we're hesitant to endorse any changes because it, it's it's painful. Mm -hmm. And whether it's there's a simpler way to do it so it's not as painful or the the budget is just bigger than it used to be and there are more items than there used to be and it's just mm -hmm. more complicated. It has a ripple effect across the board. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, too, um, one of the comments we received last year was how useful this was mm -hmm. to residents. I didn't hear, hear anybody saying that they couldn't find anything in the report. And in this report, the school budget number is mentioned multiple times. Mm -hmm. Right. So, with this report, I'll be hard pressed to find anybody saying they don't they didn't know what what budget 
um, was assigned to any department or division of the town. It, it's a comprehensive report, it's very thoughtfully done, and I would be amiss if I did not mention the contribution by, by, by <laughs> Pam. Uh, she spent the whole day yesterday uh, at town hall and we were paying him minus 0 0.1 cent an hour. <laughs> you gave him food <laughs> and water? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I agree. I, I yeah. think and from this, recordings, yeah. you know, we've had, we had a lot of good comments last year on mm -hmm. this, and I think the people, the residents who complain, or I think it, that it was our, when someone wanted to change something, it's painful. Yeah, so exactly. Not, yeah. So they have all the information, they have the and, information they, and they're enlightened to make a right. change. Mm -hmm. and, and that's painful if they want to make and a I change. Think, but I think if we change the table of contents to say instead of just line item appropriation, but line item appropriation amounts to be voted at town meeting yeah. for operating yeah. budget or mm -hmm. coming up with some exactly. way that, yeah. that screams on the second page and you don't have to dig through it. This is what you're voting on. Okay. I was also thinking um, the report is good. We used to, I forgot exactly at what point, uh, project some slides or graphs together. Is there something we can add as a slide of the breakdown of, at a very high level, breakdown of the budget? Well, that's what mm -hmm. I do in that's my presentation. Yeah. 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 So that should cover it pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I think Rebecca was questioning, do we make it out clear enough to right. the residents? Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think last year was a big step, major yeah. step forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was a good presentation. I accept a lot. I didn't mean the presentation. I mean the AC report. Just well, I mean, we've yeah. always yeah. presented a, a letter mm -hmm. which documents the changes and this line item appropriation. We just put a lot of things in between that last year. Yeah. So that people had more information if yep. they wanted to look for it, and this year we'll improve upon it because it'll get out there earlier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not the Friday before town meeting. <laughs> not that one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now I've just jinxed it, right? That's where it's so close. And so again, it needs to be said, Pam. We really appreciate your <laughs> flexibility, your willingness to roll up your sleeves and work. And I think that's why I always say that it's an honor to work for this community. Yeah. And one of the main reasons that is, is because of the willingness of the volunteers to roll up their sleeves and work. I, I see uh, many instances when that happens. I, however, yesterday you were so flexible, you were <laughs> very accommodating, and thank you. And I got it on Google Docs, so you okay. have it now. That was that was a big <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Ready? We have to move beyond the operating budget. <laughs> yes. Week, so. Yes, we do. Uh, so that'll be next week that we'll vote on that, hopefully. Yeah. So Monday we should have at least a number. Uh, we the have numbers. a total number. I just yes. was having issues trying it out. Um, but the so we have the revolving fund bylaw and fund transfer now. That was held last time because we were waiting to add something for the turf field, turf field. and we're not any longer. Exactly, that has been that has been settled. So I'm sorry, that's been separated. It's, it's settled it, because it doesn't need it doesn't need to be included in this okay. because it's a school committee revolving fund and they set it up under their own on their okay. own. Yeah, in, in fact, the town already adopted the bylaw that allows and authorizes the school committee to set up a revolving fund. So there will be no need for any town meeting action. That was very proactive of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So would you like to tell us what this article does? We're voting on it. Okay, um, there are two articles, uh, Article 9 and 10. As you recall, the municipal modernization law uh, created a new process for setting up revolving funds. And that process now specifically authorizes towns.
to set up revolving funds through a bylaw. The town meeting adopted that bylaw last year. However, at the time that bylaw was adopted, we were also advised that DOR was still finalizing the regulations on how to implement this new bylaw. And thus, we're now going to town meeting, having reviewed the new regulations and are setting up the, uh, the, the revolving funds to comply with the DOR requirements. The first step is to establish them in the bylaw, and then the next step would be to set the spending limits. Now, after all this is done, there will be no need for us to go back every year to town meeting to set up the, the funds. So we're not setting up the spending limits right now? That'll be... That's the next article. Next That's the next article. article. Yeah. Oh, so this is Article 9, just to set the file. Yeah. So I move the Appropriation Committee recommend the revolving fund bylaw and fund transfer article as written in the draft warrant articles and motions documents included in the four, April 18th, 2018 minutes. I second. Discussion. Again, if you ask the question in terms of uh, the fund transfer component, the fund transfer component is what we discussed previously namely that we're transferring all funds within the emergency medical services revolving fund to the ambulance receipts reserved fund. Just changing a name effectively, right? Or is it, ch it's, it's moving it out of one fund into another? Into another, yes. Okay. Is that explained in this article? Yes, on page nine. I think, uh, on page, I think I was looking at it. Yeah, on page nine. Right after the table, at the bottom of the table, on page nine. There we go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was stuck on the table. Okay, good, yes. thanks. For each number, when you you're basically you're saying you're changing the name, but you're saying deleting the line entitled Planning Board, but then when you and replacing it with it says Planning Board. So was there actually any change in the name? Does it describe the change? Yeah, you know, that's on page seven. When you talk about the different revolving fund, I was just using one example, but they all seem to. Is it the table itself that's new, rather than the, uh, the wine? I'm just guessing here. Yeah, I, I, here's what has changed in the table. Previously, there was a column that defined that any remaining funds in the revolving fund at the end of the fiscal year either stay in the fund or revert to the general fund. The new law now allows funds to remain oh, okay. in the fund. That's why you don't have that at all. Um, I think Would it be, I guess, because it's a warrant, yeah. maybe you don't have much flexibility, but it seems clearer if you actually can highlight what is, what is different. Okay. That's when you give your explanation. Right. I guess <laughs> I will. <know. laughs> So would it be like restrictions or conditions or none? Mm -hmm. Yeah, none. So it went from saying it was going to the general fund to now there's no restrictions to revert to the general fund. Correct. And, and the other thing that changes with the planning board, the, what they are referencing, and, and I, I, I see your point, usually where you show what's been deleted <laughs> and what's coming in. Um, we will look into whether we could do that. But what they were referring to here now is in the old but the bylaw that we brought to town meeting last year, there was a line that started with planning board. So they are saying that row, mm -hmm. you delete that row and replace it with this row. Right. And you can see it yes. in last year's warrant. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's what they were saying. And also, one of the reasons that, that, that 
this is specifically called out is when we submitted the bylaw that we, when we submitted the bylaw that was adopted in 2017 to the Attorney General's office, they gave more precise and specific recommendations on how to handle the the planning board fees under the new revolving fund account, also uh, under the new modernization law. In the wording, it would be a little helpful. I know everyone's going to listen to everything I make in the motion, and they're going to catch every word. But but it's in writing, and people can actually like, skim and see what has changed. It, it, it would be. Clear. I mean, yeah, could you say well, delete the row instead of the line? Exactly. I think that's that's what they. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So if you look in last year's warrant, there is a whole table that has all of these revolving funds in it. And right. which article was it? It was 11? Article um, Eleven. Yeah. Okay. And so you'll see yep. going down onto this next page, Conservation Commission is in there. So mm -hmm. that is being taken out of this and put into the new one. This, table. The new table. But it's not all of them. It's not all of them. Yep. And the and the other one is the planning board, and then open space and use of youth and family services. So they're having the same name, mm -hmm. but they're having they're changing right the process to some extent. Is it okay it's, to go? It's going for, deleting this, show what it is, and then it's changing two. So at least someone can do a comparison of the two, so you can. Do at least we could do that. Change. I know it yeah. takes a little more paper. Yeah. To explain well, it, but it, or it, just give a handout for it, even could you do it rather than putting it in the motion? Yeah. Yeah. Or we can put it as a as a page in our report. I can do that, and I can refer to the AC report on a specific page. It shows here the differences. Just yeah, this is legal. This is legal terminology. The legal way to do it. But for more explanation, we go to yeah. this page. Either way, whatever is. Uh, Can we put it as like an an appendix in the back of our report? We we, we were looking to attract changes option because that's what we've done before, and I was looking to see if if there's an example under the zoning regulations because, I, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it even under zoning. Yeah, because in the past we either if there was a new fund, we sh here's the new fund that's being created. Last year we said, okay, I think the new way legally we had to do it, we we listed all of them. Now this is right. just a change from what we did last year, but it was easy to see last year because everything this is new and this is right. what it is. Yeah. And here you're describing delete what was there previously. Okay. All right, I'm done with this discussion. I, <laughs> 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 but can, do we want to vote on this, or are we going to change how it's presented? But the motion. Well, the motion yeah. is the motion, yeah. but how we describe it is more. So we can put this into the report, the and report. I can put okay. an appendix in the report that when it talks about article number nine, then saying C appendix mm -hmm. B, because appendix A will be definitions. Yeah. Even in the motion here? No, no, in, in the appropriation committee report. Oh. When, when it talks, so it won't have anything in the motion itself, but it can be referred to in the appropriation committee report and give all that information. Correct. I don't charge as much as legal to make changes. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready for a vote? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All those in favor of the vote for the motion for Article 9, revolving fund by law and fund transfer, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. It carries. You're going to tell us to hold Article 10, right? Yes. In fact, I thought I saw the, the draft that had the spending limits, but apparently it was not ready for prime time. <coughs> it will be something for Monday? Yes. Okay. Thank you.
Main Street. Main Street. <laughs> so I just want to make a, a point of reference that we in the Appropriation Committee normally make a motion and have it seconded and then open an item up for discussion as opposed to how other committees do it where they may discuss beforehand and not and then choose not to vote or not have anybody make a motion mm. just so people understand why we do it a little differently here um make sure i'm getting it right I move the Appropriation Committee recommend the Main Street Corridor Project article to borrow $3 million. I second. Discussion. Writing. We we'll discussed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do still have. I do have an issue with this one. This one's a tough one for me. Um, the fact that several years ago it was turned down at town meeting. Um, also, you know, as Norman Kamalo was discussing, that there's still a lot up in the air or negotiate. You know, I don't know if you call it negotiation with the state on if this gets turned down who's going to pay the cost of moving the poles, or can we use that to offset this? Do we lose negotiating ability if we if we pass this? It's already, or how, how is it going to work? As explained before, the reason why the town is being asked to vote this now is so that Mass DOT can decide whether this is a project that is undergrounding or a project without undergrounding. The appropriation will not okay until the project is finalized. They simply want to know where, do, where should they spend their time. If the town is committed to undergrounding, yes, they'll spend time to. If the town is not committed to un undergrounding, they will not spend time on undergrounding. We are now at that point where the project has to move to 100% design and we advertise it. And Mass DOT still is looking at two options, mm -hmm. a project with undergrounding, a project without undergrounding. Mike, the reference to was still negotiating is to lower the cost. The cost will not go up. We lower the cost to the town. I want to do that until I exhaust all opportunities. Mm -hmm. It is not to increase the cost. If this project goes with without undergrounding, the tip will pay for moving for the moving the post. I hope that is clear. Tip will pay. That's why I was saying if it moves with undergrounding, we want to know what that cost is, and we will build it into the mass DOT commitment to offsetting the cost of the undergrounding. Is that a given? Is that so? It would be yes. that cost minus, or it's up to uh, the tip, you know, the state to make that determination. If it, we were allowed, it to is do a that. given because the. I will tell you again. This may sound boastful. Right now, the total cost of the project includes what we normally call non-participatory items. That's what. That's. What our negotiation has has produced so far, items that normally the state would not pay for, mm -hmm. are paid for. So in this design, it's given. We just don't know the amount because we will find it out during the design phase. Correct. We know the estimated cost. We don't know the final cost because that involves input from utility companies. We're getting those costs now. We have the cost from Eversource. We are almost close to getting the cost from Verizon. 
were talking to Comcast to produce their cost. And the whole idea why we're doing that is so that when we, when, if Mass Highway decides that this is, if Mass DOT decides that this is an underground project based on the town meeting vote, that cost is built into the, fed, the overall team cost. So does the $3 million appropriation include the estimated cost or it has nothing estimated or final cost? For the what? We were talking about the cost of moving the poles. Can, will can offset part of that $3 million? But you said you have, an, you have estimates, but you don't have a final cost. Are the estimates built in to yes. the appropriation? Yes, they are. Again, it's, this is how all projects are done. When we went to town meeting for the DPW project, for the library, for the school, we had estimates. And then you, bid, you finalize the design, you bid the project out. Okay. Yeah. I just made sure I understood what you were, what you were talking about. Yeah. Again, all things being equal, we would not be taking this to town meeting. But Mass DOT has told us we need to decide. Is this a project that has undergrounding or a project without undergrounding? And if we, sorry, okay. and if we don't vote, they will read it as we are not going for a undergrounding. We are not supporting it. That's what they already did. Mm -hmm. And that they'll have to move poles at that point. Yes. So it's different from the last time the town voted on this. Is there potentially more funding for it? Is that a accurate statement? There are, there are three differences from the last time mm -hmm. the town voted this. Number one, the scope of the project has been scaled down. Okay. Previously, it was from Wood Street all the way to uh, Hayden Row. Okay. Now, it's from the fire station, police station area to Hayden Row. That's the first difference. The second difference is, previously, we were asking the town to fund the full cost. Mm -hmm. This time, there's an off offsetting cost that has been realized through the town's collective effort negotiating at CS mm -hmm. and applying for a grant. And then the third piece is the design is far advanced. The cost est estimates are almost definitive mm -hmm. because they are based on plans that have been provided by utility companies. So the, the last point is we know we have a better idea of what the cost is going to yes. be? Okay. So previously it was estimated it would be like between five and eight million dollars, and you were asking for an initial, I don't know, five hundred thousand to, to do the design. That was the request right. um, in the earlier town meeting. That's why we, again, the 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 interpretation we have received is that we went to town meeting requesting an appropriation. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not a request for town meeting to vote up or down on the project. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we went out to find a grant to do mm -hmm. the design. Mm -hmm. we, we got the grant. And is the other difference that now that we're kind of doing more with fixing that intersection, this is the opportunity to do it? Like if we don't do it now, does that mean if we're going to do it in the future, we're going to tear up all the roads and it's going to kind of... Exactly. Okay. That's I the, think that's an important point to bring forward. That's well. the big, that's I mean, the big that's timing issue. Yeah. That, that, Remember, we, there was the, the water project, the water main project mm -hmm. on Main Street. Went down for some time, disrupted business. If we then do the, um, the, the reconstruction of Main Street mm -hmm. uh, on its own with an undergrounding, that's going to be another disruption. Yeah. And then we come back now, if we do undergrounding in the future, if, yeah, further disruption to the businesses. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, all these funds, are they going to be there for ever or for a long time? Or this is like, take it now or it won't be available later? In terms of the pros prospective mass DOT contribution, if the project moves without undergrounding, we're done. Th those funds are not available anymore. Because it, they will find the tip at the level at which the project is approved at 100% design. 
and the other components of the uh, fund, like uh, the legacy firm, and those would be available in future as well? Uh, again, that may depend on, it's a policy decision. The selectmen may decide to renegotiate the HCA and redirect the funds. What is the impact to the the property owners along that part that is getting undergrounded? Because right now they're tying in wires from the street up above into the house. Are they going to have to go underground to yes. the unit? And who is taking over that particular cost of the pro the piece of the project? It's built into the cost of into the estimate that we're pro proposing. Okay. So the resident but, yeah. doesn't have to pay like they have to pay for a water hookup. So the towns all the, the way up to it's the town does all do, the way do. up to the meter. And okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The the owners where their businesses don't bear any of the expense. Any other questions? Ready for a vote on Article 21, the Main Street Corridor Project. All those in favor of the motion before us say aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0, it carries. I should say we did receive a um, uh, a um, amortization table based on 10, 15, and 20 yep. years associated with this one too. Mm -hmm. Is it in the folder that uh, sent to you? And is it that? Uh, yeah, it has nothing this year, and it likely will not have anything next year, depending upon tip funding uh, on when the project starts, even. Yeah. Yes, most likely. In fact, next 19, 20, it may show up perhaps 20 or 21. Yeah, yeah 20 may only be paying an interest. The Appropriation Committee recommend the turf field project article to borrow $3,525,418 as described in the draft warrant articles and motions document included in the 4-18-18 minutes. I second. Discussion? So just so I'm clear, the money is going to go under the levy limit, which means that this handout that we got that shows like the cost and stuff. That's what's going to be coming out of. Did you see the amortization schedule? This right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that means that the first time we start paying, we would pay a total of 390000 That's the annual debt service listed. And mm -hmm. that would come out of the excess tax levy. It's within the levy limit. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as long as everything falls, the whole operator, operating budget falls within the levy capacity, it right. will be funded if, we, if it gets approved. But uh, and it has, be it has funded to be, has on an ongoing basis because we're building that money into this existing operating budget. How does that work? I'm, I'm probably being. It's when built into the debt numbers in subsequent years and forecasts. Correct. Okay. So I, over the, you know, it was comparing, you know, we said you got both the amortization schedules for both the turf project and the, um, uh, the quarter, Main Street quarter project. This one, a lot of the, you know, just as much of the borrowing is under the CPC, and I wish we could talk with the CPC, but I, you know, you had different amortization schedules, I believe, on this one. Was yeah. it, was it was was for amounts, for different for, amounts. Is it different amounts or di number for of years? Length, for, for the, years. The, the Main Street is number of years. Oh, okay. So the turf is different amounts. So the turf shows no. the three and a half million with no CPC, 
Okay. The 1.8 million with full CPC that they have allocated towards it. And then the third one was 1.3, which shows the $500,000 of, um, uh, if they had, if they are able to get $500,000 in donations okay. to offset it. So what Jean was saying was, look at the 1.8 million, because that reflects full CPC funding and no donations. It's the okay. most conservative. The one I'm looking at just shows three million. So oh, to go to the one. second page. Well, the second page just shows a different. And I'm wondering if it's just mislabeled. It shows 15 years versus 20 years. Are these just mislabeled? That's that's the, the Main, Main Street, Street one. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. That's just the amortization of well, the general fund debt. portion, but in actuality, CPC is borrowing the money too. Some of the money, yes. They, uh, is there a breakout how much they're borrowing and how much they are they're borrowing they have out of their bucket they're yes. a million out of their bucket yes and then and 720 out of their borrowing yeah. okay i don't know if we got the thing you're talking about the one i'm showing has the same amount and it just shows this is what we're looking at right uh, and they might three have million no, that's the quarter one so then what's this one those are both the down three five two five okay. Is the so um, we got two on the downtown quarter? No, no we got one. Ones. And these are the two different ones, but they're not showing me a different amount. I mean, I'll, I'll email it to you right now. Thank you. <laughs> Mine got different amounts. Did we get the same email? I got I got two different ones. You might have just printed the same one twice. <laughs> <laughs> but no, because they look different. <laughs> they actually look different. But you know, one might have been downloaded in Google Sheets. That's what it is. Okay. Google Sheet probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe. All right, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I probably have it though. Let me look. No one can afford it to my work. I'm so good at printing it and everything. Okay, so I am glad they are using existing funds. If they, I did have a concern that if they were borrowing the entire amount, they're just leveraging that out. They'll always have, they can fund anything. You'll see debt for, over time, you can see debt for CPC being huge. The, the amount borrowed, even though our debt service is okay, but will be indebted to having to pay for CPC for, for 30 years or 20 years. But okay. I'm glad they're doing it this way. All right. I see it. Thanks, Norman. I have it. Yeah. yeah. Do you need this, though? I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Your work email address I do is. Yeah. Uh, that's my personal letter, not my personal letter. <laughs> oh, that's it. Here. Do you want to just look at my laptop? <laughs> We've solved yeah. the issue. Oh, you solved the issue? Okay. Yeah. No need to email. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get it. It took us a while. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Um, All right. The, the one concern I do have with regards to CPC is, and it's primarily because I don't know what the funding that's going to be approved at town meeting this year is, but if you look at the breakouts, mm -hmm. we are, we're fine on the budget reserve, which takes $700,000. Um, from the budget reserve for the turf field, but we are using up more than is currently in the passive active. The motion we shared tonight fixes that. It does? Yeah, that's what we were concerned about. We were frantically looking for Henry and uh, everybody else from the committee just to discuss that. Now the $700,000 is from the... The $700,000 is the budget reserve. No, and designated fund balance. I thought that was the budget reserve. No, it's not. So the undesignated fund balance is what, 1.2 million. Yeah, we, 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 will, we will revise this chart. Okay. Yeah. This is what I was using it off of, assuming these were, these were the numbers as of July 1, 2018, and not knowing what the appropriation in would be this coming this day. Coming year, exactly. In fact, we now know the state here said they will, the matches will be at level percent. Okay. Yeah, this year. So uh, again, we we realized that anomaly, and so we reached out to CPC, and clearly, um, the the buckets don't support 
the vote has was made, but the intention is still the same. We, a town meeting will transfer uh, whatever is in the uh, budgeted reserve for FY18. Mm -hmm. Budgeted reserve for FY18 will transfer that into the. But no, we'll, in fact, we, it's not a town meeting. At the end of the fiscal year, we will close out that account to the uh, undesignated fund balance. Okay. Yeah. So does the CPC money come in that one chunk, or is it is it given year by year? It comes in one chunk, and then it's apportioned to different buckets, as was approved at town meeting. I think it's 10, 10, 10. Yeah. yeah. And then the remainder goes to the... So the money that's going to be applied to the turf field, though, they want that whole amount's not going to get dumped into their... They have a million of a million of the million seven is going to just get dumped, dumped so in. Means you don't have to but then it. seven hundred twenty thousand CPC has to borrow against their future fund okay. balances. Okay. So now that I'm on the right page, that has the fund balances. What bucket is the seven um, million dollars coming from? Did you say the uh, budgeted reserve? Yeah, that list does not include the undesignated fund balance. I don't believe it does. I thought, it, I thought that's what that was, but you're saying no, there's no. still even more out there. Yes. So CPC has more than three and a half million. They have something in addition to this as well? Yeah. Correct, yes. Shouldn't that be in here too? No. Yeah, we're fixing this. <laughs> okay. A again, so, okay. It's, okay. It's, it's that whole exercise of reconciling what's approved at town meeting, uh, what's in our muni system and what did you report to okay. the state? Okay. So we'll, on probably on Monday, we can Looking see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I, I didn't bring the hand up. I, do, I did have the corrected amounts. Okay. I did get the corrected amounts this, this, this afternoon. Just curious, what was last year's state matching? Yeah. It was higher than 11%. I can check. Okay. Because that was my question about if we're going to get all at once, if the state decides not to fund it, then we get a, a well, lesser it, amount, Well, it does right? change, so we at least... Yeah. But I think it's off of... These are the, what we have in the buckets are the FY18. This is what's in there now before even this year's allocation. So we have our contribution, the taxpayers in fiscal year 19, but and not we have the, the state, and we have their match, too. So. Okay, yeah. And that's what's showing on these fund balances? Fund balances... Is Fiscal year 18, okay. so this is our so current okay. year, so it doesn't it. even include what we budgeted for next year. Okay. Well, last year was 15% one five, and this is going down to 11%. Well, I, I just want to add that I was I was happy to see that the revolving fund looks like it's going to be robust enough right. to go very far in a carpet replacement and, and that it's being set up such that, you know, they're already looking to the future yeah. for this. Yeah. It's nice that they have experience with Fruit Street so they can get an estimate of what the actual hours would be because I because I think my fear is always that they're going to overestimate what that usage is going to be um, mm -hmm. you know outside of the school use and that they're not going to hit their revenue targets so I, I feel more comfortable with it having seen that would you say those estimates were conservative or I guess we didn't I think they're pretty conservative yeah. you know because one was um, You know, they're only talking about 120 hours of soccer games. So that's, you know, that could yeah. be a, a couple weekend tournaments. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Or 10. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, do th I do think that the demand is there just in terms of the, the trouble people have scheduling tournaments as mm -hmm. it is now. And I think it looks like um, 
from year three or year two, they're increasing the estimates. Yeah. Because they're basically saying, we don't know when we can start in the fall. Mm. So we have to be conservative as to what we can do. Right. And once it starts, there will be more marketing and word of mouth. Kind of mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah. It looks in line with kind of how it is today. So on the fruit street, right? Mm -hmm. Our ways. It's a realistic. Point. So Pam, you've been on the fruit street, the turf. Are you, I you went to a few meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, they, they are definitely, they have done a lot of homework on this mm -hmm. in terms of understanding the different um, types of turf that they want to get, um, advantages and disadvantages, looking at the, the lifespan of the different products and, and working to get, you know, the best price they can out there. So. Mm -hmm. I think the the one part that is the nobody really knows is is the donations. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't doubt that they're going not going to go out there. I think they're going to go hard for them. Mm -hmm. But no, when they have the expenses, the fields four and five is that current <coughs> expenses comparable to Fruit Street size wise and not it's double that. I. I think uh, I'm not sure because I have not been to Fruit Street. Um, I think I based on what Dan was saying, it sounded like they were um, Fruit Street may have one field, and this will have Fruit two Street fields. Has two. It has two turf fields. I believe so. Yeah. I don't know. I've not been. Yes. So. This one has one. Two. But one's mm -hmm. one softball, one soccer or they they can change the they can change the lines. I think I'm not sure if I think well based on what they said tonight, I don't think they can play two varsity soccer games at the same time. I could be wrong. I'd have to pull that up. Yeah. The reason I was asking that is uh, when we say Is it comparable? comparable. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you know, a lot of it is the um, this is just what Fruit Street has, and we won't really know because it is a different fill mm -hmm. infill. We won't know until we start doing it. But as I was pointed out to today, if you're looking for cost savings, it's not going to be a cost savings. What it's going to do is allow the teams to play. No, that's the biggest rally, certainly, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, we're, what, middle of April, and when does the season end the sh in the spring, usually? Beginning, middle of May? Probably so they have time for their, uh, well, because they're the end of May. They Maybe end when the May. summer ends. You know, well, no, but begins. you get the seniors, so right. they probably do. They play after graduation still? There could be club, you know, if they're oh, doing okay. tournaments and stuff. Right, but I'm thinking, good. like, for, for, um, High school sports. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, this is certainly the value is not as quantitative, but uh, it's more about you know, how it's given to the students and the community. But mm -hmm. in terms of the ongoing costs, seems like this is convincing enough that we'll be covering the expenses. Mm -hmm. And I do like. The fact, even though it sounds like we probably won't get anything writing or that says here's how much they have to contribute, I do think that there is a phase two plan for the other fields, and I know it is a few years off because we just replaced the the track mm -hmm. there a couple of years ago, so it gives them that time. But I think at least this committee or or someone can hold. Say, hey, you said you were going to, you know, they do try to come up with a phase two that you said you said you were going to raise this and then it kind of can uh, there's a valid reason for them either motivation to come up with the money or which that you, they shouldn't start the next phase until the mm -hmm. money has been, uh, donated or, and I think the learn you know a lot will be learned from 
from this yep. particular project. Yep. Are we ready for a vote? Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is for Article 23, the turf field project. Uh, all in favor of the motion, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0, the motion carries. CPC. Are we going to meet with them? Aren't we trying to? I thought the idea tonight was to have um, Dan. Uh, oh, this is not just the turf fields, but all of the CPC. Yeah, I, we made we reached out to the chair, and the chair said it's open to Dan. So we should have kept I guess Dan I didn't here. realize that when he was here. <laughs> I thought he was here on behalf. I thought he was here for turf too, turf as well. Because of there are other items besides just right. Well, so the first article is the funds, and it's not broken out yet anyway. On the motions. Yes, we're working on that because we need guidance. Uh, they did not vote specifically on, on this amount, and that's why it's going to be proposed by the town manager. Okay. Oh, then this, this is similar to last year. Yes. That the finance director, he says, here is here is the amount that will be funded by the taxpayers into CPC, and here's how it has to be broken out. So it it doesn't involve CPC in terms of getting it to the right bucket. This is just the way the town gets it there. Correct. The dog park passive recreation? No, 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 we're not on that one yet. We're on 26. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, will we have this for Monday night? Yes. Okay. And now you can ask. <laughs> so, I guess what we could do for 27, the community preservation recommendations, is how, how's your knowledge on these? On 27? Yeah. You, yeah, I, I can speak to... Seven. I can speak to the one on after 28. Item D. <laughs> so one of the three. Yeah. <laughs> the one I negotiated. Oh. <laughs> yes. Should we? Um... Let me see if that's okay with the chair. I can call Ron Clark and see if I can reach Ron Clark. And you can participate by phone. To, just right to keep now this or moving. Or right now? Right now? Yeah. Yeah. And just to keep this moving. Well, the first one is, like, a, is one that happens every year.
Is there another one we can go on to, or should we wait and see if it's wrong? We could um, start to talk about the report. Oh. Is that because this is the last? Uh, the narrative? The narrative or, or the report in general. So, is, so can we see if we can get them Monday? Monday? Okay. Yeah. I did update it in the report, so it will literally be a small add mm -hmm. with, the, with our recommendation at, at the time. Because remember it said we will include the F1 and um, F1 19 request of projects. Do, 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 do you want me to send this to share it with you with a different email? Yeah. Here, you can. So we can work directly on the budget narrative if we want to focus on that first or are there pieces that we wanted to look do we want to go page by page or in the narrative in in the whole report i had comments on the narrative the to the citizens of hopkinton page mm -hmm. maybe that's yep. the one yeah mm -hmm. Still says it. The second paragraph, um, this year has been a, has continued to be a very challenging year. We never really said it was a challenging year last year. This is kind of the first year. So can it be changed? This has been a very challenging year in terms of uh, financially. Oh, I thought it was challenging starting last year. Mm -hmm. But we never said. I we thought we did. Did we tell everyone it was challenging in yeah. our I think we did. Okay, so I didn't use the word challenging last year, <laughs> but <laughs> but I think if you read all the pieces, it shows how we, the steps we took to reduce the tax impact down to 3% and, mm -hmm. and, and for the first time in recent memory, using a 30-year amortization and more aggressive new growth numbers and and trying to keep debt down even though voters had approved out to exclude the debt outside the levy limit. We tried to minimize that impact to taxpayers. Yeah, we always do that though. I never, I didn't see it was a Challenging year this year. Oh. We just have, I, I know it, it's yeah. it's literal literal in there, but so oh I can so this year has been a very challenging year. Yeah. I prefer yeah. that. I don't know if anyone okay. else has that thought. Um, and then once you're done with that, so when we say that the um, five percent impact to the average single family homeowner, mm -hmm. isn't it a five percent impact to everyone, or does it really change based on? Is this like basic 101 tax? That yeah, I'm this saying? is basic 101 okay. where overall the budget is, the impact is up 5%. But right. if, if you look at individual assessments, how that changes things, mm -hmm. 
you know, not everyone's going to be exactly 5%. Okay. So. All right. And then in the, um, in the sources and uses tax impact, slide mm -hmm. it does say average single family home right. and it shows what that is yeah yeah yep. okay and since generally it's homeowners mm -hmm. that are at town meeting voting for this right that's the number that that They're captures it best for them so now let me ask you um again trying to be the average homeowner um, when it says the very last sentence of that paragraph, the uh, still well within the levy limit um, due to the excluded debt approved over the last few years. Is it due to the excluded debt or is it in, even with the excluded? Yeah. Because it's not within the levy limit because of the excluded debt, right? Oh. I think, yeah. So I think what I was trying to say there was it's um, we are still within the levy limit, right? Overall, even with the excluded debt. Y yes. Or how about largely due to the excluded debt is outside of the levy limit? It, you know, you kind of. Largely, oh, why not say just to take out debt. that last part of the? Yeah, but the, the yeah. excluded debt is. A vote that means it's outside of the levy limits. So right. that's why we have excess <coughs> inside. Right. So, so what if we just ended it after prop two and, and a half? half? Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say yeah. the yeah. same thing. Okay. Yeah. One other suggestion sounds minor, but it's helpful. And it should be noted that it is. The use of it, it may be confusing. So we may want to call out. Oh, it's second paragraph. Yes. Okay, so it should be noted that, that the five percent tax impact. Oh, thank you, yeah. Yeah. thank you. Whoops, and I hit caps lock. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you tax all are that. seeing that. <laughs> I'm gonna start screaming it out there. <laughs> It's pretty cool, isn't it's it? It's pretty cool, yeah. It's yeah. a fair yeah. fight. If you do it on the screen, you get mm -hmm. dizzy. If I scroll <laughs> up and down fast. <laughs> um. I have a comment. I'm not sure where it was. Shouldn't excess levy be cumulative? That must be in one of the um, charts. So never mind. It could be. Yeah, okay. I think that was all I had on the uh, narrative. It was hard because I couldn't write in the document. <laughs> oh, and you wanted to write in the document, right? Document. You could have downloaded it. I know. And then done your said then 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 done it. We we did a share with only letting you view. Right. To keep from violating open right. meeting. Exactly. Law. No, I understand. So I was just like writing notes instead, so so, is everybody good with the narrative? Um, third paragraph. Yes. We continue to analyze financial information as it becomes available to try to understand if, there's an, if this is an issue for FY19 only or will be ongoing for the next few years. I think we've seen budgets growing the last two years and this year, so I think there's already an emerging trend. What so paragraph are you we on? Say it will the, be the, la last the second to last sentence in the third um, paragraph. So don't say if, it, if this is or it is. Just be it more is. adamant about yeah. it. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. So we could say we continue to analyze financial information as it becomes available and have determined that that these this type of or this kind of budget increase may be expected in the next few years. I started two years ago. We continue to analyze financial information including the three next three year projections we've included in this report. Mm -hmm. 
I thought initially when you used the phrase, going back to the second phrase, that this year is continuing to be a very challenging year financially. I thought you were referencing the comments that Mike made at a town meeting last year, i.e. this whole idea of using one-time um, sources to fund the budget is not a good idea. Right. We did a lot of we did a lot of but was it creative work. I don't think it was nearly as challenging last year. We did those things, but we didn't have the challenges this year of really having to cut back. We found using those sources the way to fund and keep the impact at a reasonable level. But this year we, we were paying the price for that. That's what made this year really a, a financial challenge, I, I, in my opinion. Yeah. We, we cut back last year, too. I didn't think it was as painful as this year. Yeah. <laughs> so to say continued yeah. kind of, to me, minimizes the effort that was put in. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah. That's all. It's not. A, it's not a big thing. It's one. One or the other. But continued. I. I just thought this year was really, was really a challenge for the different departments. Mm -hmm. So again, Pips, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that this has been the trend the last two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where we really have to think outside the box to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. The budget increases have been greater than in past years, and we also have slowly been inching into the excess level. Is it worth saying that on a sep on a separate sense, even if it is financially, you know, as conveyed the last year, the, the, the challenges that we predicted ahead came to fruition? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I, I told you so. <laughs> I, 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 I like, nobody likes that. Ten or fifteen <laughs> years ago, we were we were doing you know dog Similar. and pony shows with the structural deficit and how we didn't have enough revenue to cover the expenses. And when yeah. you have collective bargaining agreements that are already above a two and a half percent, it's hard to keep everything within. I think we've had a, a lot of growth and we've been able to to take advantage of that, but now it's going to go back to that structural deficit because we are going to lose that new growth revenue, um, which has really been able to fund stuff. I think in the second page, I thought I saw that you make note of the new, um, the, the, sec the second page, the first paragraph yeah. there, that we do expect yeah. to go down and that's going to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that one? Is it financially challenging year, even with the high new growth? Yes, exactly. So, okay, I'm still working on that one sentence. <laughs> we continue to analyze financial information, including the next three year projections, which we have included in this report, and these challenges are becoming more of the norm, or no? No, these challenges are indicative of, of us. Of the upcoming of a, structural up, up, deficit. Of the upcoming <laughs> structural deficit or, or uh, Give me the, the challenges that lie ahead. Yeah. Predictor, yeah. Are a good predictor oh, of the challenges that lie go. ahead for the community. Uh, okay, so. Yeah. There's one point that I'd also picked up. Well, hold on, because I have to get this sentence right first and I don't have it I yet. I like that predictor of the challenges. Indicative of the predi predictor okay. of the challenges. Of so we continue to analyze the financial information, including the next three years' projections, which we have included in this report. Mm -hmm. And these. And we feel these challenge. No, these challenges are predictive. Indicative. So we said change to predictive. Is it predictive or indicative? Well, not really. In, you know, because it's the future. You can't say it's indicative. Right. Or is a good is a predictor. Of, of the future trend, which will be a challenge. Oh, You've used challenge choice. <laughs> that's where my problem right. was. <laughs> the trends are predictive of future challenges. Or future, a structural deficit. Right. Is it a structural deficit? Structural. Though? Potential upcoming structural deficit. Potential structural financial issues. No, it's big. These trends are predictive. Yeah. 
of future challenges. Challenges. Mm -hmm. You still have two challenges? No, I have nope. trends instead of challenges. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. But now I have to do predictive instead of indictive of okay. future challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will spell that correctly. Or anybody, oh, you guys can't change it. One observation, okay. Yeah. A phrase, we continue to analyze financial information. May it lead town meeting to think that the committee has made a recommendation on the budget without completing its review. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Proactively, so, so, um, so we continuously. Yeah. No, I, I thought the message was you continue to take a long term view there we go. of the budget information. Yeah. Yes. You have monitored the current year alongside the next three years mm -hmm. and this is what you have seen. I thought that, that that that's what you So we continue to take a long term view of the financial information? Yes. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. To that end, we have reviewed the next three financial years. Oh, oh no, so no, I wrote, no, 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 yeah. Exactly, we have this, you have yeah. the sentence. We yeah. continue to take a long-term view of the financial information, including the next three-year, okay, projections, oh, no, even, which we have included in this report, and these trends are predictive of future challenges. My suggestion is don't change the sentence you have. I changed it. I can't get it back. <laughs> as, 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 as such, we have included projections. It yeah, I have it. I, I, <laughs> I saved it for the minutes, trust me. As such. As such. I think it, it looks good yeah. now, actually. I like yeah. how it reads. You now. like it the way I have it or the way Norman's saying? The way it's in here right now, which you just modified. With a, so oh, with a okay. little. Oh, so yeah. we continue yeah, to take time. a long term yeah. view of the financial information, including the next three year projections which we have included in this report and these trends are predictive of future challenges no, the end that's of these a really long sentence like on. yeah <laughs> how about period these trends are predictive of future challenges exactly. do, do, do. <laughs> yeah i'm just on the document i can yeah. it's like a little google are you not a google are you oh work pc say <laughs> Oh yeah, I was gonna say it doesn't matter where I send it to you then. Yeah. Are we on to the next comment? I think, I think so. Par <clears throat> Paragraph four, um, where you say uh, it continues to fund the free cash is continue to fund a uh, portion of the pay as you go capital projects invest with both the general stabilization fund and other post-employment benefits liability trust fund, OPEP. Yep. Any any reason we're not funding it where we should be? Is, should there be any, is it partial funding? Or uh, yeah. uh, because we do, talk we, about do we need to, make, do we made, need to make note that we did not fund it where we should be this year? We did at the bottom. We, did we talk is, about that? Um, the very last paragraph. Yeah, the final paragraph where we, right are saying these are our concerns. Yep. We've not fully funded the town's OPEP liability. In this budget? In this budget. Oh, hold Should on. Should it be more specific? No, well, we said Is additionally with the new rules for estimating the town's OPEP liability, we have not funded the trust to the full amount calculated this year, and we'll have a more difficult time catching up in future years. Do you want to say additionally with Recently changed rules or? Yes. So that Updated? It looks like, yeah, so that it looks like it's not revised. Like, revised rules. Yeah, but I would say recently because wasn't it in the past few months in, that that happened? It was, in it was, last we, year. We knew about it when we okay, had our first mind. budget meeting back in uh, it was October. Okay. November. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> but it, it is relatively recent. Right. But we could say additionally with it, revised rules. Yeah. This budget does not fund the full amount. Yeah, you said that way. Well, I said additionally with recent with revised rules for estimating the town's OPEP liability, 
we have not funded the trust to the full amount calculated this year. Kind of and like this budget does not fund them. It's yeah. real clear yeah. the messaging. So yeah. do you want me to say that up? It's, where do, so instead of we have not funded the this budget. Yeah. This budget does not fund to the full amount needed. Yeah. It's a calculated required. Does so not fund the trust yeah. to the full amount required. Period. Um, yeah. Well, it's calculated because it's. I mean, yeah. there's no law out there yet that says you have to fund your right. Okay, so yeah. it can't be required. Yeah. Yeah. Recommended. No, calculated. calculated. I mean, it's a number. Yeah. It's okay. not a. With so now we have, and we'll have a mortgage. We need to say, and we will have a mortgage to go away. We, yeah, this budget does not fund the trust to the full amount calculated this year, and the town mm -hmm. will have a more difficult time catching up in future years. Yeah. One more suggestion. Um, I'm open. The, the letter highlights themes. However, it doesn't give specifics. For example, going back to Rebecca Celia point, right off the bat, and this is just a general comment, um, right at the top, the first sentence, the Appropriation Committee has reviewed and recommends the proposed FY2019 operating budget and capital articles presented by the Town Manager Board of Selectmen in the amounts of then you state the amount. Um, it gives the opportunity to list what the school uh, budget is and what the municipal side budget is. And mm -hmm. you say it up front in terms of what you are recommending, it's specific. And then also, when you mention. You need an amount. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide the <laughs> amount. And also, when, when you mention the, <laughs> the tax impact, the, the general theme has always been, yeah, it's 5% tax impact, but what does it mean for me right. as an individual household? So you can provide a specific number there. Similarly here with, uh, in relation to the OPEP, we know how much we're funding it at this level, we know what the balance is in the account, and we know what our actuarial, our calculated actuarial payment should be. Those are specifics that could be added to the letter. Okay, so I think then in the second paragraph ba -ba -ba. But, but after it says the town was able to arrive at a compromise of 5% tax impact the average single family home or, which translates into a X percent exactly. increase a, yeah. an X dollar increase yes and, and I'm not suggesting you do that now I'm just simply saying perhaps when you finalize the letter you may look for opportunities where you can give specifics we're finalizing it <laughs> it's nine, right? it's no? 919 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I need the dollar. Uh, 481. Is that four dollars and eighty-one cents? Yeah. No, it's four hundred and eighty-one. Is that right? That sounds really high. Mm -mm, that's right. That's really high. It's five percent. Oh, when we were at seven percent, it was. Five hundred ninety-eight. Yeah. Or sometimes it's five hundred something. has been very after careful consideration of the desire for both level services and moderation of the, to the tax impact <coughs> the town was able to arrive at a compromise of a 5% tax impact to the average single family home owner this translates 
to an increase of $481 for the average taxpayer. You want to say with a, I think I saw a number with a, for the average home value of 524 or 533. Yeah, we have the number. We have it down here. Uh, yeah, I have it on, in the report somewhere. Yes, right. the report. Um, five, 571, 490. Safe. 571 around. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't 571 490. 490. So if I said this translates to an increase of $481 for the average taxpayer whose home is valued at $571 $490. This was only achieved through the collaborative effort, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so I have the specifics for the amount of, in the, that will go in the first, first line at the first paragraph. Yeah. I just have a big blank line we're going to fill in. Um, okay, I'm questioning that last sentence. I'm sorry. The 5% tax. Still within the levy limit? Isn't it because of the excess levy and not really the levy limit? Because isn't the levy limit technically two and a half? No, the no. levy limit includes uh, excess where levy. we yes where we are plus the excess okay. levy. Yeah. All right. Is that how it says proposition two and a half? Is that what? Uh, how it's how yeah. it's yeah mentioned. yeah. Everyone always says prop two and a half, but it is proposition two. Mm -hmm. and a half. I'm good. The rest. Mm -hmm. What were you were you were having a suggestion for like something where you can put in a specific amount or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, is I'm the sorry. OPEP? Yeah, OPEP. Or are we better off? Because uh, we have to update that OPEP slide anyway. Mm -hmm. Is it better to be explained more fully on the slide and we can reference? See slide blah blah. See the page on OPEP. Should we have a positive note at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's so? Thanks. She wants a positive note Thanks at the end. Thanks for coming to town meeting. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just, it just does sound kind of doom and gloom. I think one, one, one opportunity also is while the town certified free cash, they will put in brackets the amount, is lower than the last few years. In brackets, we put the amount. And it's one million four. You don't have it off the top of your head either? I know there's <laughs> 272 somewhere. <laughs> is it, is it, I want to say it it's like, what? Oh, so wait, here it is. 1487. No, no, that's MSBA. Shoot. Um, I had it. Yeah, are we here. Combi combining the pre cash with the current, or is it just the one? Well, it's on the page that you were just looking at. No. I mean, that has two numbers. That's that's <sighs> million that's four seven or million four fifty five. Mm -hmm. 445, and I don't think that's the right full number. Oh, that's we have changed. the number. Yeah. Okay. It's in here somewhere. I asked, hold on, it's probably in my notes. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's in my notes. Mm -hmm. I have OPEC too. No, it's in the answers, the question and answers. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, question and answers. I oh, have the For PSU, or will? Um, it's in my article. 
Here's your, do you want me to put the amounts in for those? I'm thinking there's an opportunity again. I'm just going to find a portion of the Additional pairs equal capital projects. 230,445. I'm thinking the total, here you see the sentence, additional pairs equal capital projects. Oh, so I could put a portion of the pay as you go capital projects, open paren, 230,445. Mm -hmm. Investment in both the general stabilization fund, 125,000. Mm -hmm. and other post-employment benefits liability trust fund, OPEB. I'm gonna, can I take OPEB out of there? No, I need to define that. I just, yeah, exactly. I'll put it before liabilities and liability trust fund instead. Mm. So I don't have two open and closed parens at the same time. 400,000 on that one, right? And supplements the operating budget for, and I don't have this number yet. Yeah. Uh, for snow and ice deficit spending. Yeah. Well, that's the one that's the article two mm -hmm. that we haven't, one or two that we haven't changed, two. Um, additional page you go capital projects then through the ambulance ambulance receipt reserves fund two hundred ninety thousand. Hi Ron. Mm -hmm. And unused capital balances from projects completed in prior years which did not require the full funding authorized. Four ninety nine. Eight twenty one. Put in the middle. Furthermore. Mm -hmm. Oh dang! You know what? I, I keep hitting. I keep hitting my pad. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. We know what it is. So there. Um. Furthermore, the excess bond premiums resulting from general obligations dated blah 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 will be applied. The excess bond premiums. Once again, give a number. In that last line of that paragraph, it says a final source of funding is from the money raised by the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation to assist with debt service related to the library fund expansion. Yeah. How much is that? It's, uh, we have the number. It's 300? No. Yes, 300 and something. Do we still have money we have to borrow for the library? Yes. So we can apply the remainder of that, those funds against that borrowing? Y yes, and I'm trying to remember why strategically we had to divvy that up. Perhaps that's how we got to the meeting through. There was a reason why we did that. Okay. Yeah. Instead of applying the full 450. Mm. Yeah. There's a reason why we did that. I'm trying to remember. So do you know how much you're looking for the, the funding from yeah, the HBL? Yeah. yeah, we have that. Okay. Did you tell me your handout? This one? Uh, no. There's no in your presentation. Yes, yes. Oh. In that one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes, still the toilet. <laughs> you know there was a breakdown. We have we have done this so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it somewhere. There's a specific yeah. amount. I'll tell you in one second. One second. Thank you. Yep. Let me see. Yep. In the Q&A? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where it is. That's the amount remaining to be borrowed. Oh, there it is. 317,710. Yeah. What are the other sources of revenue? Yeah. 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 Wow. See, our questions are good. We know what to ask. <laughs> In the next paragraph down where I talk this year's financial model continues to reflect relatively conservative projections of new growth and local receipts. Do you want me to define those there, or? We didn't break it anymore? Yeah. 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 One way we could do that is to simply add a phrase at the end, estimated it, and then put the amounts respectively. Or do you want to just talk about the change in percentage? Oh, you want, oh that's one other way. Yeah. yeah that's do we know way. what that is for those? A change of percentage for new what, growth and local receipts? Like what the percentage Oh, that's in the is. forecasting, but this is just in fiscal 19. Oh, OK. Yeah. But we could put, oh, so this year's financial model continues to reflect relatively conservative projection of new growth and local receipts, comma, estimated at blah, yes. blah, blah, and yeah. blah, 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 respectively. respectively. That is me. I just saw New growth that. is two million and seventy-five thousand. And local receipts. Local receipts. Four million five hundred and thirty-nine six seventy-five. Do you think that means anything to anyone, though, or do we need to show what it was before? Was it? No, it's just showing that's how much we think it is. Okay. We have graphs in the back. Yeah. for comparisons the new growth but it just here's another source of revenue that mm -hmm. isn't coming from the, the current yep. taxpayers okay. to pocket yep okay Do you know what the full amount of the OPEB liability to be calculated this year is? Yes, we, I, we can give you that number. What it was supposed to be? Yeah, I'll throw that in in that last paragraph in the last line where it says, additionally with revised rules for estimating the town's OPEB liability, this budget does not fund the trust to the full amount calculated this year and the town will have a more difficult time catching up in future years. Yeah, was it 900? Oh, was that on the Q&A? I think it, it was. Mm -hmm. 854, 654. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to um. Oh. <coughs> well, you get our contribution this year to be fully funded 
is from 854, 654 to a million ninety, depending on what you were looking at. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. which number? Mm -hmm. could state at a minimum of 854 or a minimum of mm -hmm. since it's a range Ranging from. Mm -hmm. I need some zeros. Screams right there. Yeah. <laughs> we've we've underfunded. Mm -hmm. Because uh, on the first page we talked about what the funding was of four hundred thousand. Are we good? Mm -hmm. I need from you that page still. The Which budget page? message. Oh yes, we we'll, we'll, Is that what we'll the narrative needed right here is? No, uh, n no, the insert budget budget message on page four. Oh okay, yep. The narrative needed here. This Norman was gonna is gonna provide that as well. Okay. And then the forecasting model is the one that shows the the three years in the future going forward. Um, I don't know that we need to. I think with the explanation on the page before of the sources and uses. That should go a long way to to explaining this next page as well, pages six and seven. Tax impact um, is just showing basically what's happening to the tax, and there's your average single family value home and the increase that it's going that they're going to have. Mm -hmm. The tax impact versus inflation. I need to get from you, Norman, the um, the FY18 tax impact net of new growth. Net of new growth. Yep. Okay, on the excess tax levy, I don't think we need this slide anymore because we've shown two pages before the tax impact and it yeah. shows the excess levy in there. And this may be more confusing. Exactly. I'm looking to the group. Uh, which page are you on? The Ten. excess levy. Are we going to go out more years? 
on the excess levy? Yeah. No. Uh, we did that in the forecast model that's okay. on pages six and seven that goes out three years. Okay. And that shows you on that very bottom the surplus is your excess levy. Yeah. Am I correct in that comment? Correct. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a benefit going out many years if we're right now eating it up with other things. So right. Who knows if it's going to be there or not? So I think if you, and this one do, didn't go out anyway, the excess levy page. It's just, it's just historical. It was historical, so mm -hmm. I think it's. Yeah. So You're I think right. take yeah. out this page. Yeah. Just try to do it where I don't take out everything. debt service for the life of me, I cannot get the dollars there. So I added a chart at the bottom. <coughs> <laughs> That's a way to handle it. That's fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I tried. <laughs> do you want to add dollar signs in your own? Um... In my chart? Yeah. I yeah. can do that. The next page is the big one. So on the historical and anticipated debt, mm -hmm. this is the the Ron Eldridge chart. Yeah, I was just saying, Ron Eldridge chart? This this is it. But mm -hmm. I don't know that we are pulling all the information we should be, including the SBA reimbursement. No, current year borrowings that we're going to be make, proposing at this town meeting, putting that information in there yet. Because I think this is just saying, here's what we have now, mm -hmm. and here's how it's going to have to be repaid. But we're not adding in both amounts to be voted on at this town meeting and, more importantly, um, anticipated borrowings over the next, or asks over the next four years. Yeah, it's, it's a very rough projection, very, very, almost rudimentary. There's no objective way of, of, of projecting out the upcoming years. Uh, we could base it on the capital plans that people have provided, mm -hmm. but other people turn around and say, it's town manager, don't make that assumption. We're not approved. We have not yet approved these projects. I've heard that before, <laughs> so it's a... Uh... Yeah, I was thinking, can we do a color coding just for the ones that are um, open for vote or up for vote? Well, this right now is only existing debt. It's nothing up for vote. Yeah. So we haven't even added in... This year's... The undergrounding, the right, turf, yeah. the, the school borrowings. Yeah. So what I was thinking is, uh, so for... So add like a, a add second like a color. Second color on top. Like a stat just, chart. So yeah. You know what concerns me even more is that you're showing the debt service, but the MSBA funding disappears too. So it, it's misleading that the debt, you know, in between fiscal year 2021 and 22 yeah. dropped significantly. Yeah. It really yeah. doesn't. And... In terms of net numbers, it doesn't. Right. right. Terms. Well, we could offset. With, that's a direct payment. So you could offset the MSBA reimbursement within these numbers. The question then is going to be, in the prior years, have we accounted for the grants, the MSBA grants? Somebody's going to ask that question. I don't remember. Oh, we did with the first one. It was none were as significant as the, the high, high school. The high school in this one. What about Hopkins and the middle school? It was a higher percentage, but 
the Dalai uh, Lama was in. The way it was calculated was, I don't think it was the same, because I think the MSBA, re MSBA reimbursement was in proportion. All of a sudden, when you look at the high school, the MSBA reimbursement was the same every single year, even though our debt payment went down. So essentially what you're seeing is, you know, when we first started paying for the high school, here's our payment, here's the reimbursement, but it kind of went this and like at the end, it's like within 100,000 is really. So what if instead we put an asterisk after fiscal 22 and say, there is a corresponding loss of MSBA reimbursement of 1 million, whatever it is. Or something like that. Um, and that way you don't have to restate everything to show the offset, but it does show, yeah, your debt's <coughs> coming down, but your some of your cash is coming down too. The amount of the income, revenue, the revenue, revenue the associated revenue with it is coming yeah. down as well. But again, somebody's going to criticize us for what well, we did it for this particular year. What about the other years? Those well, no, we're saying we don't have it anymore. We don't have the debt and we don't have the MSBA reimbursement. So we're saying, even though this is dropping a lot by debt, there's a corresponding loss of revenue associated with that. And it's not an issue going forward because the new way they reimburse, they don't reimburse, they reimburse at time of construction now. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this graph is always a work in progress. If there are yeah. opportunities to improve upon it, let us know, we will we'll, we'll look into those options. Well, I think the, the first one would be, like you were saying, if you do a stack chart and you have a different color that shows, and this is what I think we've tried to do in the past, a different color that shows this is the current debt. Then we have, here's the debt if we, add, if we approve all the projects at okay. town meeting. Yes. And then here is a third line that says these are amounts that are on a capital plan to be completed in the next four years, and this is an estimate. So that, yes, it, it, I mean, let's face it, all you have to do is say backhoe. That thing has been on for, for seven years to be done and, and has been postponed because we can't, we weren't fitting it in to the, the, um, Budget. So essentially, the the debt that comes off, essentially, you know, we're paying 1.7 million in the high school in fiscal year 19 for debt service, just for the high school. I think the MSBA reimbursement is 1.4. I thought it was the that. other way around. Yeah. I thought it yeah, was like the the yes. MSBA I, is higher than the by debt. By the time we pay it off, but I yeah. think like today, it's only, we're paying a little bit more, but it drops off in two years. It goes down to 1.5. We have that chart. I can. You know, the family plays that chart. We have that chart. Oh. With the exact amounts. High school is a million. The 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 MSBA reimbursement is always the same, but the high school in nine in nineteen is seven one point seven million. Right. Next in twenty it's one point five. Say one point six, and in twenty one it's one point five, but the reimbursement associated <coughs> with that. It's one point six five one. Is that okay? Oh, it's one four eight seven. Is it? Yeah. I, have, I have an old schedule. Yeah. It used to. It was. Well, in in the uh, in the sources and uses, it's one point four seven. So it's never quite. It doesn't fully cover it, but it mm -hmm. it gets almost equal. So the things that you list are things that we need to add. As well, we were under discussion for this year, right? They that were list. well. They were on the capital plans from this year, mm -hmm. and um, and sort of 
best estimate, like, you know, with the, the general facilities, I only took half of his capital plan because he, Dave's capital plan, because he doesn't generally put everything, he puts it off to the next year and then, so I said, okay, but there's also nothing in there for center school, if there's anything that needs to be right. done for center. Right. Do we need to, like, maybe caveat that to say does not include this or doesn't? No, only because I think they've got a process. There's there's going to be a big number that comes up. Yeah. For the same reason, I didn't put anything more than an Elmwood feasibility study. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's only going out four years. Okay. Yeah. Do we need, we will need an additional borrowing for Marathon. But I don't think it's to the full, it's not to the full extent of the appropriation from the two town meetings. Correct. I think we were, I think we were, we're discussing that this Three, afternoon. three and a half million under budget mm -hmm. from the appropriation. Okay. So can we do something where we add in you know, the current year projects, the current year borrowing. Like stack, stack bar graph. Stack bar yeah. graph. The, the currently proposed projects. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So this is right now. It is the current outstanding, and then we'll add a different color stack for proposed projects in current in the. Work. Yeah. We've done that before. I remember one time, was it Ben presenting that at a town meeting? I, well, I used, to, ha I used to have it that. Yeah, we, yeah. Did, we, we used to have it where yeah. uh, Suzanne gave us a good chart where it had the. Uh, that was seven years ago now. Yeah. The last time we had it? Well, that's when Suzanne was here last. Well, we're here well first. she helped out. She and helped then she helped out, out another year. Kitchen was here. So. Yeah. But I think the only thing I, I, I know that Jean and Susan are looking at um, the school wants to make sure, you know, what, what might they have. I put in a request to John Westerling to let me know if he's got something that's just general fund that's not water or sewer. Mm -hmm. Because it is only for the general fund that we're looking at this. Mm -hmm. And then if we can get a three colored graph where we have known because it's already outstanding and issued proposed for the current town meeting mm -hmm. and then anticipated yep. based on capital report yeah. capital yeah. projects mm -hmm. yeah i agree it would be nice to have that i know it's just difficult to produce those charts but yeah whatever we can get is yeah okay i think it's driven by what's the message we want to send i think we need to send the message of yeah the, you know, we have, we, this also shows we've put off some things that we are going to need to address in, in the coming years. Mm -hmm. And don't call it the, well, the scary Ron chart for the Ron nothing. Eldridge chart shows, okay, we have the next project is the, uh, is Elmwood, you know, when is Elmwood, when they, when they can request funds for Elmwood, when's right. that going to hit? Um, and then start showing, but that's still, a couple of years out. Yeah. yeah. That's and that's, that's, and that's what I tried to do, was yeah. was figuring out when they might start hitting the budgets here. Does capital improvements do anything like this? Is the committee? Are they capital, do, they have a, do they have a charter or 10-year capital plan that they work off of? Yeah, we, we, we have that chart. Okay. Um, there are changes that are made. Yeah. I don't know if that's something we could use or, you know, say based off capital improvement committee's projections for... Well, there was a committee that we had, well, we had what initiative... Permanent building committee? Oh, no. no. It was Kemp. Kemp. Yeah. 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 Capital asset management plan. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Everybody wants to go to camp. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's see what we can do here. 
But yeah. I think it, I think it, and I think it's an add an asterisk for fiscal 22 that shows the significant decline also has a significant loss of revenue. receipt for yeah. that, revenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start wrapping this up. It's getting late. I know. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Get, oh, are yeah. there any key highlights? We've got to do the OPEP bit. The new numbers, yeah. Yeah, that, we, yeah we, 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 we can see yeah. it. Yeah, and we can look at that, yeah. Um, well, you're going down to more than one line per page. We're more than one page per grouping. Yeah, no, we, we, we these this are real, real rough drafts. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> these are rough drafts. We, we, and we, and we uh, schools are working on their, their update. Okay. So they've got that as well. Okay. Um, obviously, we're not going to do paging until... Yeah or pagination until we get there. Um, the one thing on the CPC page mm -hmm. is I think it might be beneficial to show the balances in the various buckets on this page. Yeah, yeah based on tonight's discussion, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. On the capital articles, I just highlighted where we needed to still fill something in. Is the senior tax release still for five hundred dollars? It is correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. So. Um. Oh, on the transfer to general stabilization fund, should we add the amount of the fund, the outstanding outstanding balance in the description? I think it's always nice to have the balance. Oh, you mean the yeah. balance? Yeah, 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 yeah. We should provide the balance yeah. and everything. Okay. Yeah, then we'll, we'll change the description for Article 11. So I wanted to mention that I forgot. Yeah. Page 33. Oh, okay. Uh, I want the balance in the stabilization as of. June 30th. June 30th, 2017. Yes. Okay. We're, we've discussed OPEB up above, so we don't need to talk about the balance there. The pay as you go is all there. With the updated um, descriptions, and then um, I believe that's the correct um, how we get the unused capital amounts. The completion of the capital projects where the full amount appropriated at prior town meetings was not required for the project. The school right. finance director and the town manager both approved 
the amount remaining in the completed projects. This amount does not get included in the free cash, but may be used to pay for new capital projects. A listing of the specific projects, including original article and amount remaining, is included in the Warren Articles and Motions document. Perfect. <coughs> And I basically took why we did things from what people came and told us. Mm -hmm. um. And the CPC has been updated. Then I've got the line item appropriation, which for some reason isn't as pretty as last year, but it is what it is. It gets voted. Mm -hmm. And then I did debt service, but I'm going to add, what am I adding as an appendix again? I, I'm sorry, not debt service, definitions. It was something we were talking about adding. Yes. What did we say? <laughs> is it in the definitions or the appendix? It's an appendix, but and the definitions are in the in the, in the appendix as well. Yeah, we're adding cherry sheet. We're adding new growth. Premium, yes. But there was Not something the else we were no. We're, there was something else we were going to add Do we have in the appendix. Do we have some more notes? No, I don't. Um. Was it the um, revolving funds? I was just going to say that, yeah. yeah. It was the revolving funds. Mm -hmm. To show what it had looked like and before how and after. It. Oh, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I was looking at what we had discussed in my notes from tonight. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty the sad. Revolving funds check changes. I'm fading. <laughs> That's it. Good timing. We just have to vote minutes still, but right. we're good. All right. Yeah. Do you want to go over minutes or save that for next time? Can we just do them and then I can submit them? Would that be great? Okay. Next on the agenda is minutes. We have minutes from April 9, 11, and 12. For a motion, Mike? Yep. For a motion. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, motion. Start with the ninth. ninth. I was going to vote all at the same time. <laughs> oh, okay. is that okay? okay. All right. Did I get them in different emails? Here? Yes, you got you got yeah. nine, 10, 9, 11, and twelve, and then you get a revised nine. So we have to revise nine because I forgot we for, we didn't have the we voted the minutes on the ninth. In the original yeah, ascent yeah. of the night. That's a good catch. Oh, I just lost it. I moved the motion to approve the meeting minutes from 9th, 11th, and 12th of April. <coughs> of April. Of April. But I second it. Discussion? Thank you for getting them done so quickly. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Any other discussion? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, file. Very good minutes. Uh, all those in favor of the minutes of the 9th, 11th, and 12th, <coughs> say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0, the motion carries. Okay, we have a meeting next Monday yeah. at the DPW. The new building? The new building. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have a tour if we show up early. <laughs> No? Yes. <laughs> is there a certain door we it will be obvious? I'm assuming we go in the front door, right? <laughs> Joan will be there to welcome everybody. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to, like, you know, ride in the tractor or something. Um, so one other thing, I don't know if it's may, it's still kind of early, but for the, um, <coughs> the our presenta my presentation, so I think we can take, I think what we did last year is just took a compiled a lot of the slides we already 
had put it in the AC report. Mm -hmm. And if it mimics last year's, you know, with the updated information, that's fine. Okay, let's just start updating that. Do we need to think about a meeting beyond Monday? Yeah. Well, I think um, see what we get done on Monday and then maybe schedule one for Thursday. Is that we possible? Could, we could do that. So we can still do it, too. we can post it Should. Tuesday yeah. for Thursday. Yeah. Um, it won't be here on Thursday. Oh, so we could, can you do Monday? I mean Wednesday? I really can't make it Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. Um, Because next Thursday is the 26th, right? Yes. I'm in an airplane. Oh. <laughs> Makes it hard. How much do we have left? Monday's not going to be. Monday's not going to be. We'll need another one after Monday, regardless, to, to follow Just up on the presentation right. and to make sure. But mm -hmm. And if we can get the bulk of the report done for Monday, and only have those first two or maybe three saying to be voted at a town meeting, we at least get the bulk of the information mm -hmm. out there. I mean, if you guys want to meet next, if three of you can meet and you have a quorum, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. It I may could, just be small, small things. Yeah, yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Right, and I can potentially provide feedback to one person, right? Um, before you can the provide feedback to Mike. Yeah, and there'll yeah. probably be one the next, at least one the next week. L yeah, likely. Should we just one more before town meeting, right? Should we, we pick a date then too, so we know our. So shoot for Thursday, the twenty sixth. Right. As long as you three can make it. Why Thursday the twenty sixth? Um. Well, because we, unless you can't do Wednesday, there's not going to be enough time to turn around anything. We do Monday night to Tuesday. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, next Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought we were already talking about the week after. No, a week from tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So okay. we'll have a Monday, the next Thursday, the 26th, and then another one the following week, just to wrap things up. 23rd, even. Uh, we have one the 23rd for sure. It's right. already booked. And then 26th. 26th and then we need it. do one the 26th. Okay. And then possibly one the next week, just to wrap things, things up. Yep. <coughs> And I can do any of the days on the following week. I'm still out of town on the on another plane on the Monday night, but I <coughs> should be okay. Mm -hmm. Following week, uh, the one and two I can't, which is Tuesday and Wednesday. Do you want to do the Thursday? Thursday's sure. good. Okay. The, so the five three. You got those? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Okay. 423 is already in there, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Well, 426 and 4 and 53. Yeah. So they're saying Thursdays. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.